Hey all y'all and welcome to Knit Tea Live. Yes, we have made it. Although I will admit, just as I was about to hit, okay, let's start. I realized, oh, oh crumb, I don't have my microphone on. <laughs> Which is why you can see it today. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's lost in the plaid. Um, I got my coffee and my Katigo mug because even though it's Knit Tea Live, I drink coffee. <laughs> We are back to the coffee this week. Um, I need it. I need it this morning. I don't know about all y'all. I don't know what kind of beverage that you need today. But I am in need of the coffee. Um, whew, okay, so if you are here, please make sure that you say hello in the chat so that I can say hi to you personally. Uh, and uh, if you're watching on replay, please, throughout, feel free to comment down in the description box. And as always, do not forget to give this a thumbs up. Interacting, making comments, giving thumbs up to videos, lets YouTube know that this is a space worth checking out. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be really honest today. I don't have the clearest idea of everything, like topics and everything that we're going to talk about today because, uh, frankly, uh, it's been kind of a crazy week. I'm not going to bring it into this space. Well, it might be one little thing I'm going to say. But we're not going to, we're going to have a nice, pleasant time here today. Um, because I think we all need it. I think we all just need like an hour-ish, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, where we can just breathe and enjoy life and look at pretty things and talk about our crafts, our knitting, our crochet, or whatever it is that we want to talk about and just do a little craft care, <laughs> a little craft self-care. That's on the agenda today. Um, so that's pretty much it. So I, like I said, I don't have like specific topics in mind. I was kind of wreck. If you want to know the truth, I was kind of wrecking my brain a little bit all weekend going, what can we talk about during Nitty Live? I usually try to have some kind of theme or going to do this, going to do that. And I was just a little bit of a loss. So if there's anything that you want to talk about during the live stream, please throw it out there. It can literally be anything, anything at all. Just let me know. Um, but um, I will give you an update on a couple, on one whip that I have going on. So I'll give you an update on a whip. Um, we might talk a little bit about just, it's the beginning of the year. And the beginning of the year, people like to have like craft projects, like the temperature blanket and things like that. So uh, I have kind of maybe a topic to talk about in terms of the craft projects goals that people set up? Are they ones that you're interested in? Are they ones that you're never interested in? Talk a little bit about that. And then we will have, of course, a pattern spotlight a little bit because there are some new pattern releases this week that are up on Fiber Happenings. If you don't know what Fiber Happenings is, um, on my website, knitswearsat.com, link in the description box. There, uh, I have a section called the Fiber Indie List, which is a list of designers and yarnies, spinners, dyers, who sell their work on non-Ravelry platforms, in case you are no longer taking part in Ravelry. And a part of that is Fiber Happenings, which is kind of my weekly roundup of new pattern releases, sales that are going on, news around the Fiberverse, so there's a couple of things with that. So I'll update you what's on Fiber Happenings, but you can always find out what's happening <laughs> at Fiber Happenings at knitswhereitsat.com. Fiber Happenings is updated every Friday, and on occasion I do an update midweek if there's something big going on. If you ever want to know, keep up to date on what's going on with all that, you can always follow me on social media. Twitter, I'm big on Twitter and Instagram and I have a Facebook page. Again, all that down in the description box. Speaking of the description box, real quick, 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 quick mention, you will find some affiliate links 
uh, an affiliate link is where it's for shopping basically and if you click on an affiliate link and you do a little shopping at that website then I receive a small commission and those commissions help support my YouTube channel and my website because I need coffee and resources. Um, it's a total win-win situation and I would never ask anyone to like just buy something. If you were planning to purchase something from a, a website with which I am affiliated and you use one of my affiliate links, it's just kind of a win-win. And um, I am an affiliate with Etsy. Designers do not pay affiliate links on Etsy. Etsy, the website, pays out commissions, not the designers. So just want to bring that up real quick. So yeah, I think I got everything. I think I've got all the plugs. <laughs> I think I got all the disclaimers. I even remember to say give a thumbs up. Hello, I am hope I'm pronouncing this right. Geek Bosch, I hope that's the right way pronouncing it. But hello, welcome to Knit Tea Live. You are a new name. Cause so welcome. I think this if it's not your first time here with us live at Knit Tea Live, I think it's the first time I've seen your name. So yay. Welcome. Thank you so much for saying hello. Ah. All right. It's been a crazy week. <laughs> it's been a crazy week. This is the only thing I'm gonna say since I brought up Ravelry because of off wrath stuff. This is the only thing I'm gonna say. Um, I think even though I am not down with Ravelry because of their accessibility issues, I do still think, and I am proud that I still stand by their decision in 2019 to knock the MAGA stuff off of Ravelry. So I still stand by Ravelry on that decision. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm going to say about it. Hello, Whitney. Welcome back. Thank you for being here today, making some time to be here, be here for Knit Tea Live. I am from the Netherlands. Oh, great. You know what, Geek? Um, my maiden name is Vandiver. So, uh, yeah, I've got some of that Dutch heritage happening in my family. <laughs> so, I'm always excited when I see someone from the Netherlands. I'm like, ooh, heritage, heritage. <laughs> okay, so let's look at a whip that is in progress. Um, if you have been following me here, social media, yada, 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 you know that I have been working on a pair of fingerless gloves that were designed by Liz Cork. Um, I bought the pattern as part of Fasten Off Yarn Along. This was not a project that I finished in time for Fast Enough Yarn Along 2020, but I'm making really good progress. So let's take a look at that. Um, hopefully my lighting is okay. I'm still messing around. Let me get on the right camera. There we go. I'm still messing around with my lighting, trying to get it as, nope, still not the right one. There we go. Here it is. I'll bring you up closer to the camera so you can see the details of it better. But I did finish the first glove. Okay. This yarn is not as dark in person as it's probably appearing in the live stream. Let me bring it up closer to the camera so you can sort of see this detailing. This glove has this mock cable patterning, right, that runs up along here. And this is all created with um, increases and decreases. And the whole pattern is a twisted rib stitch pattern. So let me put it on so you can see what it looks like on. I was so good, guys. I was so good. I cast it off, and I wove in all my ends right away. Oh, I still don't have the right camera on. Sorry. I, I forgot to transition the camera. You're going to be able to see it better now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. One woman show here. But, yeah. So here, you can see it better. Hopefully, you can see the twisted rib. Um, this mock cabling pattern right through here. So pretty. So pretty. I'm going to switch to this one. You might be able to see it even better with this light. Oop, there we go. Um, let's transition. There we go. I love this fingerless glove. I love the shape of it. Um, I love how just slim it is. And I love the way it feels on my hand because it's just hugging my hand perfectly. <laughs> because it's this twisted rib pattern 
and I like how high up on the finger it comes just below my knuckles. So this is a really, I have to say, I have been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying uh, this pattern. I really am enjoying this pattern. It's very well written. Um, if you're interested in this, this is by Liz Cork. She is on the Fiber Indie list. Uh, I will, it's not down there now, but after live stream is over in the description box, I will put up a um, link to this pattern, but this is called the Loose Natui, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, pattern by Liz Cork Designs. Um, it means lavender in Gaelic, which is why I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> but yes, it is lovely, and I have started the second glove. Um, so I've got the second glove going. Yay! Uh, this is how I overcome. By the way, I'm so proud of myself with this project because I am notorious. 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 I am notorious. Yes, I am notorious for not weaving in my ends and taking forever to finish projects because I just don't weave in my ends. I wove in my ends right away to finish this project, and right after I cast it on the second glove, and that's how I overcome second glove sock etc. syndrome, is I cast on right after I finish casting off socks, and I'm I'm actually I'm, I think I'm enjoying knitting the second glove even more than I enjoyed knitting the first glove because I've really got the pattern memorized now, so that's always nice. Um, but also, just back to the pattern real quick, it's it's very well written. It has, for that t mock cabling pattern, it does have both um, charts and it's written out as well. So if you don't like reading charts, you have written out directions. If you're like me and you love charts, you got yourself covered as well. Geek Bosh. Can I do this as a beginner? Absolutely. This, I think, this project, I've heard, well, let me just say, okay, let me back that up a little bit. Um, I think you can absolutely do it as a beginner if you know how to knit in the round already and you have basic knowledge on how to do uh, increases, namely a make one, and that is when you lift up the running thread between two stitches and you knit into it. Um, and I think in a lot of ways this is a really great pattern for beginners who are wanting to expand their skills because it's the mock cabling is all done with increases and decreases. Um, it will be an introduction to working with twisted stitches if you're not used to utilizing the twisted stitches but let me tell you Twisted stitches are really easy. They're not hard to do. Um, when you twist a stitch, it just means that you insert the needle in a different way than when you do a normal stitch. I will show you real quick. I can actually show you real quick because I got the pattern right in front of me. It's going to be a little tough to see because these are tiny, tiny needles. That's the other thing with a project like this. This is knitted with sock weight yarn or fingering weight yarn as we call it in the United States. I don't know what the size would be in the Netherlands, the equivalent. Is it two ply UK? Would it be called two or three ply? Something like that. I gotta memorize the international standards. I don't have them memorized. But this is a sock, this is a yarn that you would use to knit socks. So, and you knit on tiny needles. Um, these are Two and a half millimeter needles, I believe. Two, two and a half millimeters later. Geek, no idea. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I would say that this is a project for a beginner who is wanting to be adventuresome and is ready to expand their skills. Uh, if you're an intermediate knitter, absolutely, I think you can do this. Um, but here's the other thing you should just know about me personally. Me when it comes to is this a good project for a beginner? My thing is always like any project can be a good project for a beginner if you are ready to expand your skills because, um, yeah, it's I was always me personally, this was me as a young knitter. I always just did projects that I thought were pretty. 
I was like, ooh, that looks like a cool project. I want to make it. And I would just dive in and do it and kind of learn, <laughs> figure out what I need to figure out as I went along. Um, that's how I learned a lot at the beginning when I was learning how to knit. Because um, I say this frequently, but I will say it again. When I learned how to knit, there was not all this on YouTube. There was no YouTube. There was, like, there was the internet. We had the internet. I'm not that old. We had the internet, but it wasn't like it is now. <laughs> Geek just like me. Yeah. It wasn't like it is now. There was no YouTube. There was not all this information readily at hand. I learned how to read. Or I learned how to read. Obviously, I learned how to read. I learned how to knit mostly from books when I was learning how to knit. Um, I didn't even take classes. I Basically, I learned by... Uh, books and then going to stitch and bitches in los angeles area and just learning stuff from other knitters it was like that's how i learned how to knit in the round somebody just told me how to do it <laughs> someone just told me how to do it and i went and i knitted a hat and that's how i learned and actually that is something we could talk about today it's so interesting because so many of us uh we haven't we don't necessarily learn how to knit this is a thing generally true of crafting, I think. Um, we don't learn how to knit and crochet necessarily in an organized, formal fashion very often. A lot of times we learn either from the internet or books or a friend, a grandmother, an aunt, somebody just shows us stuff. And what's funny about that, I think, is that you end up with these gaps in your knitting knowledge and actually this week's video that I posted um, I talked about I ended up editing it out for time but this video that I posted on Friday was about how to do a swatch in the round or a simulated swatch in the round because when I first learned how to knit I learned from my books my books told me to swatch make a gauge swatch right to figure out to make sure that my tension was correct for the project okay and I was a very good conscientious and diligent little new knitter so I would do my gauge swatch with you know the most knowledge that I had and uh, when I went to go knit hats for the first time I did my gauge swatch and things would not turn out correctly the size would be all wrong usually too big and I'd be like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know why my hats are always so big. Why is my swatch lying to me? <laughs> um, and I, I, but you know what? It didn't occur to me. I just thought I must be doing, I don't know. It didn't occur to me to ask somebody for advice on it. It didn't occur. There's a lot of things that just didn't occur to me to go and explore and find out. Um, so fast forward years later. And I decided to take a online video course on like beginning hat knitting. And the reason I actually signed up for it was because it held the promise of learning how to knit in the round with two circular needles, which I had never heard about before. And I was like, well, that sounds like an interesting way to knit. I'll sign up. This class is on sale. I'll sign up for this video course. I learned so much more. I learned so much I didn't know. And I considered myself a relatively experienced knitter at this point. And that's when I found out that I had been swatching for In The Round Project all wrong. That's how I found out that I had this huge gap in my knowledge that when you swatch for a project in the round, you need to do your swatch in some way that is in the round. And that's when I learned about doing um, the simulated in the round swatches. And like, mind blown. And as soon as I learned that, I was like, oh, look at that. The hats that I'm making now, I'm not pretending that it, the fact that it's like an inch too big was a design choice on my part. Like, I'm actually knitting hats, like this one, <laughs> that actually fit me correctly. Who knew? Who knew that was possible? So what are, my question for you is, what are gaps in your knowledge, the things you just didn't know that you didn't know, that you've, have you since discovered, where you were like, and once it was revealed to you, you were just like, uh, oh, thank you, Geek, thank you. Geek just said that she loves my hat. I love this hat, too. Um, 
I would take it off, but you, well, I'll take it off. I'll just, you can see my terrible hair today, but I will take it off. This is the project. It, um, this is bubble stitch. In fact, on my Instagram, I have a little short video on shooting, on knitting bubble stitch, and it has a Latvian braid here, and of course this cable brim along the edge. Um, I knitted this three years ago, and I remember because it was during the time, oh, I don't think, okay, <laughs> now I gotta get back on my head, and I can only look at the camera, and everything is, okay, there we go. Um, Thank you. Um, I did this project three years ago, roundabouts, and I remember because my daughter had just been born, and I was doing a lot of knitting, a lot of knitting at that time, and I was starting to think about, um, I was starting to think about starting a YouTube channel and, and trying to talk, like, do this. <laughs> so anyway, um, but yeah, this yarn was made with Debbie Bliss uh, Blue Lester, Blue Face Lester, which I love. And it was yarn that I got in England. And so I called this my Bubbles and Squeaks hat because um, this was souvenir yarn I got in London. And I wanted to do a textured hat that had this bubbling. And I wanted, I was, I'm trying to, okay, I gotta pull it this way. There we go. I wanted to do a Latvian braid and I wanted to do a cable. And what's really fun about this project, and this is a way that you can knit a hat and not necessarily have to do a gauge swatch, is this band here, I knitted flat, okay, because this is a cable. And whenever you see a horizontal cable like this in a pattern, you should know that this is knitted flat. And then the ends are joined together either by grafting or by sewing or a three needle bind off to join that in the round. And then stitches are picked up around the edge to do the crown. So that's how this knit hat was knitted. So, um, and maybe someday I'll write up the pattern. <laughs> oh yeah. Still not. Uh, am I pulling it this way? I keep pulling it the wrong way. I get so confused because when you are looking in a camera and you're your left and your right is all reversed, so I always get confused on where to pull things. Anyway, do, 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 do. so hats, beginners, gaps in knowledge. Yeah, so if you have anything where you're like, oh yeah, that was a gap in knowledge I had, anything, let me know either now during live stream or let me know down in the description box or down the chat uh, area if you are watching this on the replay. I'd love to hear about it because I think there's so many things like that where it's like oh 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 that's oh that's how that works even something really simple like um eastern versus western style of knitting which i have a whole video knitting secrets revealed eastern versus western knitting when i first learned how to knit i was told that if you are wrapping your yarn clockwise around the needle you're doing it all wrong like you can't if you if you wrap your yarn clockwise around the needle, then you'll end up with twisted stitches. And that's all I was told. That's all I read. Later on, I learned that that's kind of true, kind of not true. Like there is an easy way to avoid it if you understand stitch mount and why your needle enters into the stitch the way that it does. And learning about Eastern versus Western style knitting blew my mind. Like it blew my mind. Um, that I think was the thing that really started getting me thinking a lot about how we are taught about knitting, the things that we're told when we're learning how to knit, that is both accurate, but can be misleading, <laughs> which a lot of my channel is actually inspired by is like, how can I tell knitters information about knitting? that will explain knitting in a more fundamental level so you just better understand what's going on with your knitting. If any of that makes sense. Okay, so let's see. I do, we are like 25 minutes into this. What was something else? Oh, okay, uh, next thing I wanted to just chat about quickly, and I would love to hear all y'all's opinion about this. So it's January, and there's something that I have been kind of tooling around with in my head, which is, do I 
want to do a temperature blanket for 2021? It's that time of year. Everyone starts talking about doing their temperature blankets. I don't know. I would love to hear if you're from Europe. Is temperature blankets a big thing where you are? I feel like in the United States the last couple of years, temperature blankets have become a really big thing for knitters. Or maybe it's just new to me. <laughs> Gap in my knowledge. Um, if you don't know what a temperature blanket is, basically at the beginning of the year, you choose a color to match the temp a temperature range, right? And then you knit a row for a blanket every day. You look at the temperature for that day. So today where I am, I think we're in the low 70s. So if I coated low, like 70 to 80 degrees as pink, I would knit a row of my blanket for today in pink. That's what, and you do this every day. And then at the end of the year, you have a blanket that tracks all of the temperature changes. And it's kind of like a memory blanket. And I see some online, like Louise Tilbrook, who is a designer in the UK. She's also on the Fiber Indie list. And I follow, we're mutual follows on Twitter. She's delightful. I adore her. Um, but anyway, she did temperature blank last year. It was really pretty. And so part of me is like, mm, they are pretty. They are kind of cool. And then another part of me is like, is that something I'm going to keep up with? Am I going to feel, like, constrained, like, oh, I have to do a row of this temperature blanket, or I've fallen really behind? <laughs> I'm probably, like, so I sit there, and I'm like, there's part of me that's tempted, part of me is tempted to do a temperature blanket, and then another part of me is like, am I really interested in that? Do I really want to do it? Maybe I should, maybe instead of a blanket, maybe I could do a temperature scarf. Although, I don't know, a blanket feels very cozy. Although, I really probably shouldn't start another temperature blanket, truth be told, because, do I have it with me? No, I took it out into the family room. Um, I have this mitered square blanket project that I've been working on for literally three years. It's the project that I pick up and down. Like, I knit a pour, of, I get really into it, doing my mitered squares for it, and then I put it down, I don't touch it for months on end. Um, it's appeared in a few videos of mine. So, Whitney, I'm interested in the temperature blanket, but I'm thinking I wouldn't keep up with it. <laughs> right? Right? You know what? Um, if we're interested in doing a temperature blanket, we could maybe. So here's the thing. I haven't done much with it. I have this um, Mighty Networks group that I started, but I've never really promoted it enough. I've kind of thrown it out there a couple times. It's a bit, but it's dormant because I've never done enough with it. Um, Mighty Networks is kind of a personalized, it's really a community board, but it feels a little bit more like a Facebook group, but it's personalized off Facebook, Facebook group. And I've never really, I started thinking about doing a Facebook group, but I'm kind of like down on Facebook and I just don't want to feel beholden to them, Whitney. But I'm also thinking of doing a temp blanket for the year that my children brought. Oh, that's so sweet. I think that's so sweet, Whitney. Like, because you could totally go back and look up the time. That would be a really sweet keepsake. So anyway, <laughs> sorry. I, I, um, if you're interested, let me know. And I will put a link to the Mighty Network and start inviting people into it and we could conceivably do just a you know temperature blanket year-long fun like knit along where we just you know keep each other on track <laughs> just be like in a fun way in a non-pressurized way and then just we all see how far we get we could do that I would set that up that would be easy to set up <laughs> But, by the way, speaking of knit-alongs, um, I am on track to get the knit-along together for the Mira glove. Do I have one with me? No, I don't. Um, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know this is um, a thing I've been talking about for a while. But I am now, right now, I'm just formatting the pattern. I have the pattern written up. I'm just formatting it so it looks a little prettier. And um, we're going to, we are, we are on track to get that started. For February. So um, if you're interested in that, 
make sure that you are signed up on my email list. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I have my email list link down in the description box. I'm pretty sure I don't. But you can find, if you go to knitswearitsapp.com, a pop-up will show up for my email list. Uh, you will get a free pattern when you sign up for my email list if you don't have it already. And uh, I will be sending out an email blast in the next couple weeks about joining the, the Knit Along for the Mira. Yay, definitely interested. Yay. So, um, yes. And that email list is also how I can then invite people into the Mighty Yarn Network. And I got to just get that stuff organized. I just need to sit down and get it organized. That's probably stuff I could have done yesterday, but um, I took yesterday off. I took yesterday off, truth be told. <sighs> Alrighty. But yeah. So, but yes, the mirror knit along is definitely coming along. Um, I'm going to, I should write this down. I'm going to put up a poll on my Instagram in the stories asking if you are interested in like doing a temperature blanket like year long, just knit along and it's like, totally just low pressure, informal. We just share. This is my color code. I'm going to do a blanket or I'm going to do a scarf and we just share where we're at with it. So that's something if we're interested, we could do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I gave my, you know, it's so funny because I talk about it and I'm like, I don't want to do it now. <laughs> now it seems like fun. And if, you know what, if at the end of the year I haven't kept up with it, so what? So what? It's just knitting. It's like, all this is supposed to be fun. All of this, knitting, crafting, this is supposed to bring us peace and joy and fun. Which, and if it's not, that's okay. It may not be your craft. Not all crafts are for all crafters. For me, scrapbooking, not my craft. I have tried. Not my craft. Um... My sister, she tried knitting. It's not her craft. But she recently discovered embroidery, and that is her craft. And I'm so excited for her. So excited for my sister because she's discovered embroidery. Yes. All right. Uh, who is ready for Pattern Spotlight? I'm ready for Pattern Spotlight. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching on the replay, let me know down in the chat. Please comment. Are you interested in a year-long temperature blanket? I mean, sure, we're already behind, but that's okay. That's okay, because it's all low pressure. I tried scrapbooking too, but did not like it either. Yeah, Whitney. I thought I would. I thought I would really enjoy scrapbooking. Um, but what I found was I was just overwhelmed by all of the stuff. <laughs> to me, scrapbooking is like there's an endless stream of stuff to collect and buy and re like like oh I'm out of that paper oh I need that stamp oh oh it was just too much it was just too much stuff like knitting you need needles you need yarn like sure I'm always buying yarn and I'm always buying needles because why not but it's like two things two things <laughs> and it's like <laughs> It's like, oh my god. Scrapbooking to me is just overwhelming. It's just overwhelming. <laughs> and too much need to organize. Like, there's just too much stuff to organize. Okay. That's okay. There are people who love it, and they enjoy it, and that is fantastic. Like, I, I firmly believe that there is a craft out there for everybody. Um, and... Need to. I'm getting set up to. Oh wait. Oops. Screwed up. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry. I'm getting set up to do, um, pattern spotlight. Show you what is happening with the fiber indie list. Um, what is happening with new patterns and stuff. Oh, it did. Okay, it's fine. Okay, got that. Here we go. I'm already up on. So first up, real quick, a little bit of craftivism from Rachie Newen Designs. She's doing what is called the Kaleidoscope Blanket Crochet Along. So if you're interested in crochet, 
Uh, oh, that's something I could do. What if I did, oh, sorry, sorry, it just hit me. I might be interested in doing a temperature blanket as a Tunisian crochet project. I might really enjoy that. That's the other thing, like the temperature blanket, you could use any, any, any technique you want. It could be knitting, it could be crochet, it could be Tunisian crochet. Um, I, ooh, ooh, now I'm getting more intrigued. Have to buy yarn. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get back, sorry. This is what happens, and I go off on tangents. Um, I'm a little magpie that way. So Rachel Newen Designs, she's doing a kaleidoscope blanket crochet along. Um, her pattern is on sale on her pay hip. And what's interesting about this, well, there's two things that's interesting about this. I'll go over to her pay hip right now. Two things that are interesting about this is, one, the pattern is a sort of pay what you want. The minimum payment for the pattern is $2, which is like not much at all, but you can pay more than that if you would like to. And all of the gross profits, so not net, but gross profits are being donated to, what are the two, let's see, let's go, 100% of gross process from this listing will be donated with money being split evenly between the Loveland Foundation and Planned Parenthood. And Rachie Nguyen is covering all of the uh, fees and processing fees for purchasing the pattern for this crochet along. And this is being done in conjunction with Molly Girl Yarn. So this is a collaboration between Rachie Nguyen Design and Mar Molly Girl Yarn. So it's for a good cause, it's great activism, and I believe uh, what Rachie Nguyen has said about this is that this is going to be kind of a design together project. If you want more details about all of this, you can go to uh, Rachie Nguyen Designs Pay Hip Store or her Facebook page. You'll find more information there. Uh, all the links for Rachie Nguyen Design are on the Crochet Indie list and the Fiber Indie list. And of course, you can find the information links for the information at knitsforzette.com, Fiber Happenings, that subpage. <laughs> so much going on. Um, but it's a really good cause. So I did want to make sure that got a shout out. Next, we have some new pattern happenings. First, uh, from Adelante, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is the Twisted Pussy Hat. Perfect for 2021. Um, she describes it as a nice quick hat with a little twist. Let's go to her website. I think this project, if you are interested in it, would be a really good beginner project. Just looking at it, are we going, oh shoot. I have a broken link, I gotta get that fixed. But here we can see it maybe a little bit better. But you can see it has this little twist at the front of the hat. And it has the two points that make like cat ears, kitten ears, which it's always adorable. I just think that's always so cute. And actually looking at it, this project might be, yes it is. This project is knit side to side. So my guess is this is not something that is knit in the round unless it's, my guess is this is actually knitted flat and then sewn together. But this looks like it's knitted side to side. Um, so yeah, this would be a good project for a beginner. Um, it's a nice quick hat with a little twist. The large cable on the front keeps the hat away from your eyes, and you can pull the cat, the hat down to cover your ears. And the little cat ears on top give the whole hat a nice playful look, which I totally agree. Um, so yeah, I think this is a really adorable hat, and. You can find the links for this again on Fiber Happenings at Knits for Zen. Keep plugging that website. <laughs> Keep plugging that website. It's really cute. It's a really cute hat. Um, I gotta fix that link. But the pay hip link works. Um, next we have Victoria Marshock Knits and she has her hearth hat. So uh, if you don't know, I do have a blog post up of my some of my favorite new patterns that came out in 2020 
One of them was absolutely Victoria Marchant's Hearth Fingerless Gloves. Now she has the matching hat pattern. So, of course I love this. <laughs> of course I love this. Um, it has the same heart and diamond motif right here. So cute. So adorable. Um, if you are interested in learning how to do stranded color work, this would be a great project to dip your toes into, even more so than the fingerless gloves. Although I really like the fingerless gloves. I'm a big fan of fingerless gloves in general. But this hat, if you haven't done any kind of color stranded work before, or you haven't done fingerless gloves or mittens or anything like that before, this hat is a great introduction to those techniques, in my opinion, because this, um, you could just tell by looking at the motif with the hearts and the diamond that these floats are going to be fairly easy to manage, and this is a good, good project to kind of dip your toe into those techniques. And I could be wrong, but remember, last year it seemed like a lot of patterns were coming out with twisted stitches. This year, I already am seeing a lot of patterns coming out with color stranded work, and you're going to see what I mean in just a minute as we scroll down the page. Oh, oh no, am I missing it? Did I not get it moved up? Sorry. I'm going to just put this here for a second. Where is it? Oh, shoot. Did I screw up? Oh, here it is. Okay. I just have it. Oh, okay. I know why it's going up. Okay. So those are the two new patterns that have been released this week, which is Victoria Marshot Knits Hearth Hat Pattern and Adelante Designs um, Twisted Pussy Hat. I'm trying not to laugh when I'm saying um, <laughs> failing. It's just a funny word. It's just a funny word. Even if it didn't have the certain connotations to female body parts, it's just a funny word. <laughs> okay, there are a couple of patterns. I have a new section this week in Fiber Happenings, and that's the coming soon section. Because a couple of patterns are kind of getting teased. On the social media platforms and I thought that I would put them up so that if you are interested in these patterns you can follow those designers and know when they are released and quick pro tip uh, not all designers it depends but a lot of designers when you sign up for their newsletter when they release a new pattern you get a deeper discount so if there's a pattern that you're interested in and it, it's coming out Sign up for the newsletter. Might get a good deal. Just saying. Anyway, um, let's see. Go, 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 go. I get this one. Here we go. So this hat is another uh, stranded color work hat. This is coming from the Knitting Tutor. Tutor. The Knitting Tutor. And it's the Worth It Stranded Hat. And, I mean, her Instagram says it. Coming this weekend, Worth It Hat. Um. Last I checked, it still wasn't released. Let's just check her pay hip store real quick. Um, Because yesterday I didn't see it. Oh, it's up now. Yes. So here's the hat on her pay hip. So if you are interested in this hat, you can purchase it today. Um, And it is on sale for 15% off through January 14th with the code HELLO2021. So I'm going to update my web. I'm going to do some updates today. <laughs> And I think this hat, it, this is another, that's just a close-up of the crown, which it's the kind of crown that I like, which is just the straight lines that lead to the center. I'm not always a fan of this, the, the, but I like the lines. Those lines are really cool because what I like about this hat is not only do you have the nice little bit of color work in it, is that you have this texture running up the crown that I think is really pretty. And, um... I think what that is, okay, I can see. So those lines, those textured lines of stitches, if I'm not incorrect, it either looks like they're slip stitches that are elongating the stitches up the crown, or um, it's just a column of garter inserted in between stockinette. Not exactly sure, but it also has this really lovely stranded color work pattern. Now, the thing about this stranded color work pattern, I can tell you, 
is that this one, you're going to have longer floats than you would with the hearth hat. So you're going to have to really uh, feel comfortable or be willing to get comfortable with capturing your floats. But that is a fundamental skill to stranded color work. But I can just tell you that right, kind of, not right off the bat, but there are just going to be some larger floats in it. So anyway, that's that hat. I think it's really pretty. I think it's a really pretty hat. It makes me feel very soothed. All right, and we have one more. So even though I had that under coming soon, it is coming now. It is here now. And we have one more pattern to look at. Let me get down to it before I This is from Linda Cooper of Mainly Cardigan. She so her patterns, she almost exclusively designs cardigans, and she has this new cardigan that is coming out. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and click on um, her Twitter so you can get a better look at the preview of it because it's so pretty what she's done. This pattern is combining a kind of a cable. There we go. I don't know how well you can see it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oops. There we go. So it has this cabling pattern along with this little in fan motif in between the cables. It's so, so cool. It is just so lovely. And I think such a pretty kind of twist. <laughs> See what I did there? A, a pretty twist on kind of cabling and a cardigan. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. This pattern is not out quite yet, um, but it is coming out soon. And if you are interested in knitting a cardigan, whether it's this or another project, uh, Linda Cooper's work is really lovely. Um, it's very much classic cardigan shape. And styling but what she does with her stitch patterns is just really lovely we'll take a closer look because why not um, this is Irish Rose and she does by the way um, knit alongs for her cardigans at various points in the year so if you're at all interested um, you may want to follow her um, on social media or um, give a follow to her pay hip store but there's this cardigan just gorgeous gorgeous cabling patterns just so pretty and like I said almost everything she does is cardigans uh, this one's a little different a lot of her cardigans feature cabling but this cardigan looks like it's mostly just combinations of knit purl stitch patterns which is really cool so if you're like feeling a little intimidated by all the cables that you see this would be very approachable in terms of stitch patterns because this looks like it's just all knit purl combinations. It's really amazing what you can do with knit purl combinations. Um, you can make stitch patterns that look like cables, that just have really lovely motifs. Like if you are a beginner knitter and you're seeing all these things, whoa, it's getting warm. Sun's starting, sorry. I have my window open over here. And the light's really starting to come through, so if I'm, my, my light's looking a little hot now. Anyway, um, but yeah, if you're a beginner knitter and knit purl combinations, you can do a knit, you can do a purl, you can do ribbing, you can do any knit purl combination stitch pattern um, and really create a lot of fun, fun, fun looking things with just very basic knit purl combinations. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Let anybody have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, one thing I'm going to do today is we have a new designer who's been added to the fiber indie list. So I wanted to do a little kind of spotlight for her because some of her designs, I mean, all of the, all the designers, I think all the designers on the fiber indie list are super talented. Um, I can't pick them out. But I, her work is very, it just very cool and takes knitting, I think, in fun directions. So I'm just going to get down, where are you? Pa I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She lives in Rome. Pa Paola, Paola, 
Abergamo. And we'll just go to her, make sure we get to the right place before I switch the screen. Oh, yay, did it right. Oops, wrong. I was doing so well. There we go. Oh, I love her pay hip store. <laughs> just right off. So Paola experimenting with mixing with yarns, mixing colors and textures in unusual ways. And I totally, totally agree. Um, she combines color and textures in such gorgeous ways. But I think what I love also is just there is a movement and a directionality to our stitches that are just very dynamic. Um, let's see. Where's one? There's one in particular I wanted to look at. I'm just scrolling down. Where are you? Where are you? I mean, oh, this, this, this is the, the, the diagonal. I might get this myself. If you want to know the truth, this is an easy poncho featuring a brioche cable traveling from one side of the piece to the other, dividing the piece into a lighter part and a darker part. This is so cool. This poncho is so cool. Um, and I just love the way the cable goes diagonal across the body. It's such an, a, a different movement than what you normally see. I'm gonna just zoom in so you can better see it, hopefully on the live stream. It's just an unusual um, bit of stitching. And it's this is done with brioche, so you would have to be comfortable with brioche knitting. Brioche is so cool. I love brioche. I don't knit enough with it, truthfully, the stitch pattern. And I love a poncho, I do. I'm a sucker for a poncho. But I think this is just such a, Beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, you also have this fingerless glove, arrows bits. I mean, it's just so cool. It has this arrow motif that goes up on one side, down on the other. Um, this, if you have like really heavy variegated yarn, this would be a really cool project for it. And there is a matching hat as well. And yeah, I just think it's cool and pretty. I love her work. I just love, love her work. I think it's fresh and fun. Um, you know, sometimes with knitting, it can, sometimes with knitting, it's been around for so long that some of the shapes that you see in knitwear and the patterning, uh, look classic and vintage and lovely, but also a little like classic and lovely. <laughs> and it's fun when you find, I like, I like when I find designers who are really kind of, kind of giving a more, a little fret, a fresh modern look at knitting and what we can do with hand knitting. And, um, I think that pal, oh, this one, mm, got to show this project. This was the other one I really loved. It's another one. Isn't this gorgeous? Flying diamonds. Again, you have just a unique orientation to the motif where you have this vertical uh, strip of this diamond motif inserted and in between what is very horizontal motifs happening. And I just think it gives such a dynamic quality to this. I mean, this is the kind of project that looks like you would find it in a store. Like, you know, this is the kind of project where someone would see it in a store, they take a photo of it, and they put it on a Facebook group and ask, does anybody have a pattern that could replicate this? Um, let's see. Paola says of this, not a sweater, not a poncho, Flying Diamonds is a cozy layering piece inspired by shiny and colorful graffiti on a wall near my house. I mean, I just think it's stunning. I love it. Whitney, wow. Yeah. So, she's just really talented. Love her work. Love it. Love, love. Love, love. So, lots of exciting things happening on Fiber Happenings this week and the Fiber Indie List. Um, Paola is one of the newest designers on it. I have, there are now over... There's definitely over 50. Might have close to 60 designers now. 
on the fiber indie list, which is like so funny how that even came about. I mean, literally all the drama was going on with Ravelry. Designers were starting to offer their work up on other platforms. And it was like, well, how are, how are us knitters, crafters, crocheters going to find these people? And I was sitting there with a glass of red wine and I just went, yeah, I'll just put together a list. I'll stick it up on my website. And so I, <laughs> I tweeted. I'm like, guys, I'm going to just put together a list of designers who are selling their work off of Ravelry. If you want to drop me your links. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, there's another website, Yarn Database. I believe it's called YarnDatabase.com. And her, she has, like, a that she has a far larger database than I do of designers that you can look at. So I would, if you're looking for more designers uh, who are selling off Rav, check that out, yarndatabase.com. Um, Cause I'm not a web person. Like <laughs> I can, I can do like really basic, basic stuff with the right tools. I can make it look pretty. I can make it look aesthetically pleasing. That's what I can do. That's, but, um, and, but from Fiber Hap, from the Fiber Indie list, that then inspired Fiber Happenings, which I'm really enjoying. Um, I love showing off these designers and talking about their work and seeing all the pretty things. And, um, yeah, yeah, because they deserve, all the designers, by the way, who are on, who appear on Fiber Happenings, who are on the Fiber Indie list, really deserve a big round of applause because they very quickly changed their whole business model in response to everything that went down last year with Ravelry. And if you can throw them any kind of support, please, please do. Because um, it's not an easy thing. It is not an easy thing that they did. Because a lot of them really, like, within weeks, totally changed their business model and are still working still working on getting all of their patterns available on these different platforms so that we can enjoy them. Um, because it is not an easy thing to do, as I have learned. Like, I think sometimes we assume, oh, you just, like, you have this PDF, how hard is it to upload it? No, it's not easy. <laughs> so they all deserve a big round of applause. Okay. So I, unless anybody has a question for me, which I'd be happy to answer. So coming up this week, uh, I'm going to start wrapping things up a little bit. The video this week is, oh, crumb, what is it? <laughs> I'm like suddenly blanking on my video for the week. I just shot, okay, here's why I'm blanking. The original video that I was going to shoot this week that was going to go up next Friday, uh, in the middle of shooting it, it didn't work. It didn't work out. And at the last minute, I changed it. I totally changed my plan. And now I am totally blanking on what I shot. <laughs> I cannot think of it for the life of me. <laughs> I can't. I can't remember what I did. I can't remember. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I know what I did. Okay, it came back to me. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, did I have a moment. Okay, so this coming Friday, the video is going to be on elast on uh, on unelastic bind off and cast on. I'm going to demonstrate how to do the Icelandic, not the Icelandic, sorry. Start over. This upcoming video on Friday will be on how to cast on utilizing the Estonian cast on which is the cast on that is recommended and used for this club. And in fact, it's how I learned why I learned the Estonian cast on. And I can tell you it's so simple. If you can do a long tail cast on, you can do the Estonian cast on. So that's going to be in that video. And then I'm going to show you how I do an elastic bind off. And it is the bind off I used for this. And I, let's see, can you see, like, look how, look how stretched, look how good that stretch is. Totally elastic. I will show you the bind off I use for this club, um, which is called the suspended bind off sometimes or the elastic bind off. So that's what this video is for next, for 
for this upcoming Friday is going to be on the elastic, on demonstrating a good elastic bind off and cast off for projects like this, or you know, fingerless gloves, things of that nature. Um, then we'll see what's coming up next week. I'm not exactly sure. There might I, there might be some things shifting around with life. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I know I've made mention before, but uh, I my career the last uh, ten plus years has been working in television, specifically reality television, and sometimes sometimes work comes up, and sometimes it's a little uncertain being a freelancer, and, uh, there's, I'm not exactly sure what my life is going to be looking like next week. It might be looking exactly the same as it does now, may look differently. I don't know yet, and I know I'm talking in code, but I promise next week at T Live, I will tell you what's going on. Ah, so that's a reason to tune in next Sunday for Knit T Live, where I will tell you exactly what's going on, um, uh, with my life. Um, so there's that. And, yeah, like I said, every Friday, Fiber Happenings is updated, so always keep an eye out for that. And if you come across your social media feeds of a designer that you really like who sells their work off of Rav, and they're having a sale or releasing a new pattern or whatever, drop me a line. Let me know. You can tag me. Let me know. Because uh, uh, <laughs> I'm always... Some designers tell me about it. They let me know to put up, and so then I know to put up their listing, but other designers, I just follow them in various ways, and that's how I find out that they have sales or pattern releases and stuff going on. But if you come across inf any information, let me know about it, because I love to keep Fiber Happenings up to date. Oh, I know one last thing I wanted to tell you about before we wrap up. Um, oh, shoot. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, sorry, you're going to have to look at me flipping around the internets, but I did want to, I won't make you look at it, because I'm going to start scrolling quickly, and I don't want to cause anyone eye strain. I just wanted to give you a quick uh, heads up on some stuff happening with some of the uh, places that I'm affiliated with, because there are some good deals happening, and, uh, okay, so, first of all, nitpicks. I am going to bring up my desktop share now. Knit Picks has what they're calling their sweater weather sale. So if you are interested in stocking up on yarn that may have been used for a sweater, uh, this is not a bad time. Because you can save 10% when you buy 10 balls of yarn in the same color and weight. This is a great stash building opportunity if you're looking to build your stash. I'm just going to save it. Um... But the other thing, that sale, by the way, is going on until the end of March. So it's nothing you got to hurry and do right now. But if it's something you're interested in, if you're like, ooh, I always want that yarn in that color, this is an opportunity to stock up. Or if you're planning a sweater or a cardigan, there you go. But the big sale that's happening right now with Knit Picks, besides that, is they are having a book sale. Um, you can save up to 40% on of some of their books. You know, I love, I love the internets. I love the YouTubes. I love how much you can learn for free. But sometimes, sometimes, I want a book that I can just grab and quickly look up the information. One of my favorite books that I refer to all the time is um, Cast On by Doff by Kath Cease. I will put a link for it down in the description box, but um, it'll be an affiliate link. But I do love this book. I've had it for years. I have it on my Kindle, actually. Um, and so many bind offs, so many cast offs I have learned from that book. In fact, talk about gaps of knowledge, bind offs. It was years. It was 10 plus years before I knew that you could bind off in more than one way. I think that book introduced me to a lot of them. So sometimes you want a good book. Uh, I did see on the nitpick site that the um, Vogue, do I have it here? I know I have it. Vogue Knitting. Oh, 
this is one of my favorite reference books of all time. I think I saw that this was on sale on Knit Picks. This, if you ever are like, you don't have a just a good, solid, make sure I'm not covering up my mic. If you don't have a good, solid knitting reference book, this is a really good one. This covers all your basics. Big fan of this book. Um, at some point I'll do a review. <laughs> At some point, I will do an epic review of my favorite, least favorite, <laughs> my reference library. Because I have a whole knitting book reference library, basically. Um, and I can go through and do a review of some of those books. I don't have all of them. Some of them I got from the library and decided not to purchase. Um, but, and I, at some point, I was going to do that review, and I just didn't get around to it. I'd still like to do it. Um, Joanne's. They're doing something at Joanne's called, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> come on frog, hop out of the throat, there we go. Joanne's is doing something called Yarnimus, and basically every week, every week, they're having some special sale on yarn at Joanne's, so, um, you know, it's going to be a big box store, so it's going to be, you know, your acrylics. But you are starting to find more natural fiber yarns at Joann's, or at least acrylic natural fiber blend. Uh, I am a big fan of their Big Twist yarn. So, yeah, you might want to be checking out Joann's for just to see if there's any deals that you might be interesting, interested in with Yarnimus. And, of course, Joann's always has coupons. Almost always there's, like, at least a 20% off coupon. A lot of times there's a 40% off coupon. You always want to keep your eye out for when they have, like, a 40% coupon off of everything because that's when you get the best deals is when you're able to get the 40% off of everything including their sale items I this I got this off I got this it was on sale and I had a 40% coupon off of yarn off of everything and that's how I got this for like a steal so, anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see. Lovecrafts always has things going on. I can't even keep up with them. Oh, and Michael's. At least for the end of the weekend, Michael's has a buy one, get one 50% off on all of their yarn. So, you might want to check them out if you're interested in that. And they also have a big clearance going on. Joann's and Michael's right now has a big clearance happening. So those are things worth checking out. Okay, so that's all the sales stuff that I just want to quickly, quickly mention. Again, uh, all those places I mentioned, Nitpix, Michael's, Joann's, uh, Lovecrafts. Yes, I am an affiliate with all of them. As always, please, though, uh, if you're planning to purchase something, if you'd like to stock up on whatever, and you use one of my affiliate links, I get a commission, and it helps support my channel, and it's a win-win situation. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. Also, though, if you're like, Carrie, I don't want to buy anything, but i like to support you, well, great free way to support me always is to give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, comment down below, and also, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell subscribing you know make sure that when you subscribe to the channel that makes sure that I show up in your uh, YouTube feed when you hit the notification bell that's when you get a notification of whenever I upload a new video or start a live stream so you subscribe hit the notification bell and if you like you can always leave me a tip by buying me a coffee that link is down in the description box. Thank you so much. Um, whenever you give me a tip through Buy Me a Coffee, just so you know, those get earmarked for reinvestment back into my channel or website. And you can know what I'm planning to do with those tips because I put a goal up on the Buy Me a Coffee. My goal now, right now, is to get a new webcam because right now I'm kind of making do with my live streams utilizing my iPhone, which has led to some hilarious moments when I have forgotten to turn off 
uh, to put my phone in airplane mode before live stream. And by hilarious, I mean embarrassing. But anyways, uh, so right now that is my goal is to uh, be able to afford a new web camera for live streaming. So if you would like to help me out with that, and trust me when I say that this is like cringy as hell for me to bring up at all. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, I hate putting the hat out. But as uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Evie, uh, Jillian Eve always says, I'm on the mission. And my mission, my mission is to spread the joy and love of knitting and crafting. So that is what all of this is about for me. So I think that is it. Let me just get this set up. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a great rest of your weekend. I hope that this has been a nice little respite for you. I hope that the week ahead, who knows what's going to happen, but we will come back together next Sunday and have another craft self-care and respite. But I hope for you personally that you have a great week ahead. And um, thank you again. Thank you so much for joining me. Whether it's live or you're watching the replay. I just so appreciate that you spend some of your life with me. I am humbled all the time by the incredible kindness and generosity that you have shown me by being here, by leaving me compliments by everything. I am overwhelmed, overwhelmed by it. Just thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. All right. So I hope that you have, again, a wonderful rest of your weekend. And as always, happy health and happy knitting.